In this tutorial, let's focus on applying materials to our model. So working with our material library, we can go in and we can take advantage of our 500 plus materials in the library and work with those in our real time view. Uh, you'll notice if I expand this window a little bit that we have uh, a lot of materials and they're all going to be categorized. So for example, Exalta paint, or we have metal materials and under metal, we have subcategories for all these different materials. You also have the ability to search for materials. So if I type in something like tire, right, here's a muddy tire, and then there's a tire material. So you can always use that to quickly access some of your materials. Um, but they're all going to respect real life materials. And generally there's going to be subcategories for most of these. So for example, the plastic folder, uh, if I expand that, you'll see we have clear plastics and hard plastics and soft plastics. And within all of these, they're going to be even more, um, specific, uh, categorizations of materials. So for example, with the hard plastics, we have rough plastics and shiny plastics. So it's just good to know that you can always expand those to find some specific material that you're working with. Uh, if we want to apply a material, that's really easy. Uh, let's say we're going to start working with the main body of our camera. I can go over to the metals folder and then I can get an anodized folder, uh, excuse me, an anodized material, a rough one, and then I can just grab it and drag it over to my part. If I don't let go of that material, uh, you'll see that it gives me a preview when I hover it over a specific part. When I do let go, now it's applied that material to those three parts. What's important to note here is that these are all separate pieces of geometry. By default, those came in uh, and were linked uh, because they were the same color in the modeling application. Uh, same thing for these buttons. These buttons share a common color. So if I go to my Chrome folder, get a basic Chrome and apply it to this part, You'll notice that those have been updated. Additionally, anything else that had that same color in my modeling software has been updated so that it's all a linked material. So those are linked materials, even though they're separate pieces of geometry, uh, they can have the same material that's applied to them. You can, however, always select an individual piece of geometry and I can do a couple of things to unlink it. One, I can unlink the material here or I could right click on my part in the real time view and then select unlink material. If I do that, then I can actually replace that existing material with this other material. So that that's now an unlinked material. So there's no connection between those. Uh, let's say the opposite was true that this material had the wrong or this part had the wrong material applied. What I could do is I could right click on any piece of geometry. I could copy that material. And then I could right click on this piece of geometry here and I could select paste linked material that would assign one material so that now that's a single material. And if I make a change to one of those, it's going to make a change to all of those, right? So that's working with linked materials. An easy way of uh, copying and pasting materials uh, is if you just hold down the shift button on your keyboard and just click on a part, that's the equivalent of copy. Now, if I hold down shift and right click on a part, that's the equivalent of paste linked material. So getting a handle on your in scene materials is going to be crucial. Uh, another good thing to know is that whenever you're working in Keyshot and you have materials or textures or colors that you use often, you can save those to a favorites tab over here. So before Keyshot 6, there were no preset favorites, but if I expand the little favorites drop down, you can see that I have some favorites already assigned. What's cool about this is they don't just include materials. You can save colors, textures, environments, or backplates. Uh, but all of these are available to you. The way you save a new uh, material or anything as a favorite is just select that in your main library right click on it and you can add it to a favorites group. Uh, so we have pre-populated it with architectural jewelry and key shot favorites. I made a folder called camera favorites. So now if I select camera favorites and I go to my favorites tab, you'll see that now that black Chrome has been added to my favorites category. So favorites are a really handy way of speeding up your workflow. So I can just take some of these favorite materials that I've applied uh, and then uh, assign them to some of my parts in here. So for example, uh, I'm missing a black leather. So let's go into the leathers folder and I'll get a black leather. Let's add that to my camera favorites. And now I should have that black leather here. 
Perfect. So now we can go in. Uh, I can't see through that glass because I'm in performance mode. So I'll disable performance mode. I can shift left click to copy and then shift right click to paste. So now I've copied and pasted those glass materials. I've got this little part back here. I'll get a hard shiny plastic, apply it there. Uh, what else do we have? I'll get a flat material and just apply it to this kind of LED lens uh, just so it's one solid color. If I want to apply a part here, so for example, if I want to apply a material to those parts under the lens, like a, a hard rough plastic, if I drag it over, uh, Keyshot thinks I'm trying to apply it to that piece of glass. So what I can do is I can just uncheck it. Now that part's no longer visible. So now I can apply that plastic material to that part. Now I can right click, hit show all parts. I get my lens back, right? And I've applied the part, or excuse me, I've applied the material to that part underneath. I'll also apply a material to this part right here. So basically I'm just gonna go through and quickly apply a few materials. Uh, Oh, let me see. I've got this little USB port right here. So let's zoom in. I will turn off shadows by hitting the S key and I can get this copper material, apply it there, get a matte black, apply it to these dark places on the inside. Uh, and now swinging back around to our in scene materials tab, you'll notice that most of my default materials have been replaced by some existing or key shot material. So that's how we can apply materials here in our scene. One thing that's also good to know, so we have all of our pre-made materials. We also have colors. What's cool about this, and let me show you an example of where this can be really important. Let's say on this model, we had two dissimilar materials. So in this case, I've got this anodized metal, and we also have, let's say, a Moltec texture. So I can grab this Moltec material, apply it to that part again, because we, we imported it and kept the original scale, that's a one-to-one -one representation. But let's say these two materials had to actually be the same color. Well, what I could do is go to my colors tab and here I can actually select colors and apply those to my material. What's great about this is we have full Pantone libraries and RAL libraries. So if I grab any one of these colors here, so for example, this Pantone color, or I can do a, a search for a Pantone color. Uh, let's look for a green, right? So now we have all the greens from Pantone. So I can grab that Pantone color, drag it over to the part, it takes on the Pantone information, and I drag it over to that mold tech, and it is now the matching color. So if I double click on a material, I can edit it. And you'll see that even though these are two separate materials, they're being defined by the same Pantone color. So you can work with colors and apply those to your existing materials to quickly create your, your, new, um, your new materials. So I can right click on a Pantone, add it to my favorites. And so now under camera favorites, I'll also have that Pantone color if it's one that I use often. But just a quick note to show that uh, you're not just limited to eyeballing a, uh, a color just by selecting it here. Uh, you can use the Pantone uh, library to define that color as well. So that green's okay for the metal, but uh, I'll go ahead and change out this, uh, this part right here. Uh, we talked a little bit about materials. Let's talk a little bit about textures as well. I'll change this to a shiny plastic. Right, so this is just a black shiny plastic. And now let's uh, hop over into textures and talk about what they are and how to work with them. We'll cover textures in our next tutorial. You can find more learning content on our YouTube page. Thanks for watching.